Good morning. You like the red tie? Okay. Just, just between me and you, I didn't wear it for you. God told me to wear it. <laughs> It's almost like before I even speak, I got to say, no offense, no offense. Um, so um, I think the enemy tried to do everything he could to not get me to come here today. You know when you're not sure if it's the enemy or God in your life? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. When, you know, is, is God holding you back or is the enemy trying to prevent you from going? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And it takes a lot of prayer and a lot of seeking. You know, most of you, uh, most of you work, you have jobs, you have a lot of responsibility. Um, this is my job, not, not to bring a message on Saturday. To be honest with you, that doesn't take much. Um, my job is to, to kind of hear from heaven. Um, men of God were supposed to be prophetic. They were supposed to hear from heaven and then speak what they hear. And... Um, you're always safe preaching a message from the Bible. You can't go wrong with that in a church. You know, you, you take a topic and, um, and, and use scripture and you preach from it, it's safe. But when you prophesy, it's not safe. Because if you're prophesying correctly, it's a tremendous responsibility mm-hmm. um, to be accountable for saying things that you think are from God that aren't. So today I have to do a few of those things. And so... Um, I'm just telling you up front, you're more than entitled to hear from God for yourself. You're more than entitled to get your own revelation. You're more than entitled to take anything I say in one ear and let it out the other. But I'm just telling you, you got to give people credit for trying to hear from God and speaking what they hear, as opposed to playing it safe. Too many people are playing it safe. Uh, Believers have been playing it safe for years and years and years, and this is why we're in the condition we're in. It really is. We shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, Satan didn't do this to us. We allowed it. We allowed it. We stood by and and sung songs in buildings like this and hung out with other believers in Bible studies and small group fellowships. And although it's important to sing songs in buildings like this, um, and although it's important to fellowship with other believers, we are not called to be God's defense forces. We're called to be God's offense forces. You know, you can put on the helmet of salvation and hold up the shield of faith all day long and fight Satan's fiery darts. But we also have a sword. And the sword is offensive. We're supposed to attack with it, correct? I mean, if you're in a ring and you've ever boxed or, or did what I did, full contact martial arts, um, even if you're tough, sooner or later you've got to swing. Otherwise, you're going to get knocked out. You understand what I'm saying? And for too long, we, we didn't swing. And now we're swinging on social media. That's our platform. And, and we fight on social media. I don't know because I'm not on there, but I'm sure a lot of you are. That's your platform. And you get, you know, you say something on social media, and, and the people that amen you are just people that are like you. And then the people that are fight you, I mean, you got to take it to the streets. You really do. You got to take it to the streets and you got to live it out loud and you don't have to be ashamed for too long. People have allowed themselves to be put in a corner. You know? Like, well, I'm going to offend them. I've told you 20 years ago, the gospel is offensive. You're basically telling somebody that if they don't believe the way you believe, they're going to hell. Is that what you're telling them? Is that the message? I mean, because basically, the Bible says there's only one way to the Father, right? Not a lot of ways. And, and for too long, I just had to get this off my chest, for too long, God's love and the love of Jesus has been overemphasized while the wrath of God has been de-emphasized. If you told me as a secular person Jesus loves me, I'd be like, great. Okay, good. Does that mean I could do whatever I want to do and still go to heaven when I die? I mean, that is not true. 
That is not true at all. And, you know, when the Lord comes back, he's not coming back as the little infant in the manger. That was for a time, and he had to grow up and die. Let's not forget, behold the Lamb of God. And what's his purpose? To die for sin. And supposedly, to the best of my understanding, the execution stake of Messiah was supposed to change us. It's not, it's not magic. You're supposed to look at that and see what the Son of God, the, the divine Son of God went through. And you have to realize that every time you perpetrate sin against another individual, you are flogging their soul and crucifying their heart. And it was supposed to change us. But you know what? Soft heart get hard pretty easily, don't they? So, with that being said, allow me to read a psalm. If you have your Bibles with you, it's Psalm 12. And this is a community lament. A lament is a, an inconsolable cry, a wail. And um, it's because the people of God at this point, 3,000 years ago, were dominated by liars. Can't you see that the people of God today, 3,000 years later, are dominated by liars? We're being lied to all the time. Forgive me, I don't read the news. I don't watch the news. I don't have cable. Um, I'm not on social media, so I guess I don't know what's going on. So I'm, forgive me for being out of touch. But while you're on the news and social media, I'm in this. And this is the only truth there is. It says, help Adonai, for no one godly is left. Don't you feel like that sometimes? I'm not talking about being arrogant like what happened to Elijah when I'm the only one. And God said in 1 Kings 19, 18, you're not the only one. I have 7,000 just like you who haven't bowed down their knee to Baal. But don't you feel like we're kind of becoming the minority? And don't you feel like we're living in a, in a world and even in a nation that's not post-Christian but absolutely anti? I mean, are you with me? You don't have to be with me. Maybe you have your head in the sand. I don't know. I don't know. But it says, the faithful have vanished from humankind. This isn't something new. This has happened over and over and over again. They all tell lies to each other. You know what lies are? Lies aren't just blatant deceit. Obviously, there's people out there that are blatantly deceiving people. But what about half-truths? As many times we tell half-truths. When you go into a court of law, what does it say when you put your hand on the Bible? Thank God I've never been in a court of law. Hopefully I never will be. But it says, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth? The whole truth. And then nothing but? I mean, don't open your mouth if you're not going to speak the truth. What about exaggerations? Is that a lie? Yes. You're lying. You said there was 11 people there when there were 8. That's a lie. What about broken promises? Is that a lie? Yes, you spoke a promise and you didn't fulfill it. Rabbi, are you serious? Look up the words. This isn't my opinion. They tell lies to each other, flattering with their lips, but speaking from divided hearts. I, I, I don't mind a, a compliment every now and then, but I could tell when there's strings attached, just to let you know. I could definitely tell when somebody wants something. If you want something, just ask me. You don't have to go, that's a great suit. By the way, <laughs> flattery is insincere compliments. And it's always connected with some selfish motive. Divided hearts, these are people that think one thing but say another. And a lot of times they say something to one group of people and then they say a totally different thing to another group of people. They're like chameleons. 
They call politicians. <laughs> That's what political people do. They know how to appease everybody with their speech. They know how to get you on their side and get you on their side and you on their side. And they never take a stance for truth because when you take a stand for truth, you're going to divide. May Adonai cut off their flattering lips. Now the psalmist is begging God, silence the ungodly. Just let their tongue cleave to the roof of the mouth already. And the tongue that speaks so proudly, those who say, by our tongues we will prevail. Our lips with us, who can master us? We're in control of our own destiny. We're our own God. What we say goes. That's basically what they're saying. Because the poor are oppressed. This, this, has happened, this has happened since the beginning of time. Oppressing the poor, taking advantage of people. Why do you think we outsource everything? It's not like the people in Manila or, or in, in Baghdad or ever, things are being outsourced. They're just trying to make a living. But they're totally taken advantage of. <clears throat> And sadly enough, they're just not well trained because you could just train a person so well when you pay them 10 bucks an hour. But why do they do this? When you hear on a recording because of high call volume, you buy that? Do you know what they really should be saying? Because we want to make more money, use your computer. We're not hiring people. Because of heavy call... What's the heavy call volume all of a sudden? Hire somebody. Hire a person. But that will cost us money. So instead of making like 800 grand, you'll make 700. Will you stop already? For God's sake, stop. Because the poor are oppressed. This happened in Micah's day, 750 BC. This isn't, there's newsflash. There is nothing new under the sun. Cain was Adam's son. Adam, the first man, he bashed his brother's head in with a rock in cold blood, smashed his own biological brother head in. You know why? Jealousy. There's nothing new under the sun. Lot's daughters got their father intoxicated so that he would impregnate them. Incest. What's new is that there's just more volume of it, and it's more intense, and it's more flagrant, and it's more widespread. But from the beginning of time, you ask me, 33 years I've spent with God every day in my life. Am I trying to impress you? Heck no, I could care less. But after 33 years every day, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. It's what I told you 20 years ago. The problem is sin, and Yeshua is the answer. That will fix all the world's woes. Because the needy are groaning. Groaning. I will rise up, says Adonai. That's good. Then say, I'll rise somebody up. He says, I will rise up myself. When God is promising us here, his promises can be trusted. God can't lie. It says he's not like man. It's not possible for him to open up his mouth and speak a lie. And he doesn't use deceit or manipulation or flattery like his creation does. There's no double meaning. There's no error in his words. He speaks clear-cut truth. We don't have to scratch our head. You might scratch your head about the time when Messiah is coming and keep scratching. You're going to have a huge scab because you're not going to know. But most of what God speaks is true, and the stuff he doesn't speak clearly is not for you to know. So why are you bothering trying to figure it out? Wouldn't it behoove us to spend more time doing what God's told us to do blatantly, as opposed to trying to figure out things in Revelation that we'll never know? I will now rise up, says I don't know, and grant security to those whom they scorn. He's going to deliver the poor and the needy and those groaning. Those are the ones that are being taken advantage of. They have his heart. 
The words of Adonai are pure words. Silver in a melting pot. That's pure silver in a melting pot. Not sterling. Pure silver. Silver always represents righteousness in the Bible. Everything he speaks is right and true and just. Everything. That's why you need to stick your head. Get your face at a Facebook and put your face in his book. You're not reading it enough. It has a cleansing effect. It will wash you. Refined and purified seven times over. Seven is a number in Hebrew reckoning for what? Spiritual perfection. Not just perfection. There's divine perfection too. Spiritual perfection. We're refined by Adonai's words. That's what that verse is saying. We're refined by Adonai's words. Who are you listening to? I've never heard talk radio. I'm sure it's very impressive. But you think everything they're saying is accurate? This is, this is what you can trust. You, Adonai, protect us. So what happens here? The believer sees how horrific things are. Believer, do you see? Now I can just come in here and just rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, make believe everything's okay and we can leave and we can smile. But trust me, I speak to pastors and I get them to be transparent. You know why? They don't know how to be. They're taught they're not allowed to be. Most churchgoers don't know they can be transparent. But when I talk to them, they get transparent. Most of them are walking around in controlled rage, the true men of God. They're trying to just control their rage. You ever feel like you're trying to control your rage? And then when you try to control it too much, you know what happens? You just get tired. Anybody tired? Anybody exhausted? Anybody over it? Would anybody here like to cut off their pinky if they knew that your shoe was going to come back? You know how many pinkies we'd have here? A whole bunch. It's okay. Now, why are some people not tired? Because they're not real believers. They don't see what's going on. They think it's all just going to be okay. You know? COVID came and we thought, oh, it'll just be okay. And then the Delta variant came and said, oh, it'll be okay. Then Omicron, which is running rampant. And now they're still saying, we'll be okay. We'll rise up. We'll fix it. We'll get a drug. They don't even realize they're shaking their fist at God. They don't even see what's going on. You, Adonai, protect us, guard us forever from this generation. That's what your prayer should be. You're not going to fix it, sweet pea. No matter how much you think you know. Only God can fix it. You, Adonai, protect us. When things are falling apart around us, the believer instinctively, instinctively, innately, turns to the Lord for protection, runs to God for protection. The wicked strut about everywhere. The wicked strut. Why do you think Jacob didn't get his hip healed? Because when we get healed, you know what we do? We exchange our limp for a strut. And we strut. It's better you limp. God's close to the needy and the broken. A broken heart and a contrite spirit, I will never deny. Did anybody ever hear that? The wicked strut about everywhere when vileness is held in general esteem. Vileness. That means worthlessness. It means a depraved, disgusting immorality. That's what we have today. You know how many sick and demented people there are? I hate to bring it up, but how many men look at a little girl, like when my daughter was eight, with a sexual desire? You know how sick you are? And how bad you need to repent and cry out to God for deliverance of that sickness? Who are you listening to, dear Abby? This reminds me, it's very similar to what it says in the book of Proverbs. 
chapter 30, 11 through 14, it says, There is a type of people who curse their fathers and don't bless their mothers. What did Paul tell Timothy? In the last days, there's going to be people that curse their mothers and fathers. There is a type of people clean in their own view, but not cleansed from their filth. You know how many believers are self-righteous that walk around thinking they're so holy? Do you know how bad you need to repent today? No sense of shame. Everything I do is good and right. There is a type of people, how haughty they look, utterly supercilious. David Stern's brilliant. Supercilious just means cocky and proud. There is a type of people whose teeth are like swords. Yes, they're fangs and knives. They devour the poor from the earth. This is their insatiable appetite for greed, for wealth. They rip, they tear, they devour the poor by their long hours and low wages and miserable working conditions. And they think it's okay. Because God forbid they pay them another buck an hour. You see, am I, I don't know, am I alone? Do, I, I'm not super spiritual. I'm not that good. Do you guys not see what's going on? Well, my advice is don't be part of it. You might not be able to stop it, but you can stop it from entering your tabernacle. My dad said, kid, you can't prevent birds from flying around your head. They're going to fly, man, but you can prevent them from building a nest in your hair. So what you can prevent, prevent, and what you can't, Try not to get super frustrated over. If my dad was alive today and saw the country that he won a purple heart for and a bronze star for bravery and was a marksman and busted into that the Germany and saw the Jewish people, his people, and delivered them from the oppression, if he saw America today, I'm telling you, he would drop dead. He would have an absolute coronary. I know my dad. How did it happen? We'll get to that later. Stay tuned. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your holy sanctuary. Thank you that we can be real and transparent and not be fake and phony. Father, I'm begging you that I wouldn't say anything that would upset you. I'd really rather not. And I don't want to say anything that will upset these people. They're good people, Father. They love you very much. You're the only one with the answers. Please help me today in Yeshua's name. Amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.